Today FM is awesome in Ba. We love you today FM. Today FM rocks in the story and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM is number one in Tele. Today FM rocks in Otaka. Woohoo! Today FM is the most popular station in the scene. We love everything about Today FM here at Golden Point Reki Reki. Everybody in Singapore loves Today FM. Today FM rocks in Ba. Bulan 2 saya betul FM en nampak dua air rakyat Bula FM nampak dua inosor Gue etapa ke buat sekolah sama Bula FM ngan Bula FM nampak dua air korbu Bula FM nampak dua air sawa Bula FM nampak dua air lotokan Bula Nampak dua nampak Bula FM memba Bula FM nampak dua air nasir in Singapore Kalau tak lihat ke warung yang Bula FM yang lotokan Kalau tak lihat ke warung yang Bula FM nampak dua air Tonight, isolation makes Fiji stronger, says Prime Minister Borenge Mbaini Marama. Commonwealth welcomes progress, but Fiji remains suspended. And a familiar sight in the skies gets a fitting farewell as it prepares to leave. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate, and you're watching FBC News. Four Fijian soldiers serving with the UN Disengagement Observer Force on the Golan Heights between Israel and Syria were injured in a motor accident over the weekend. The soldiers are part of number three company of one FIR under the UN DOF mission. A TFM armored vehicle carrying the soldiers overturned. Three of them sustained minor injuries and were released after treatment. One of the soldiers suffered spinal fracture and is receiving treatment in Israel. Their families have been notified and further details will be released after a thorough investigation. Commonwealth leaders have welcomed Fiji's new constitution, saying it is a step towards restoring and holding elections in 2014. But Fiji remains suspended from the grouping. The Commonwealth heads of government meeting in Colombo ended on Sunday, with leaders urging Fiji that an independent national election commission be set up to oversee the conducting of elections. In a communique, they pledged unwavering solidarity with the people of Fiji and noted their expectation of Fiji's reinstatement as a full member of the Commonwealth family. It says this can only happen through the restoration of constitutional civilian democracy, the rule of law and human rights. They also welcomed the Commonwealth Secretariat provision of technical advice and support for the elections and has offered observers. The Fijian government did not w want to comment on the issue. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbani Marama has told delegates to a Secretariat of the Pacific Community meeting that some neighbors choose to isolate Fiji because of the path it has chosen to take as a nation. While opening the governing council meeting of the SPC in Suva this morning, Baini Marama said, if anything, Fiji has become stronger. Mika Longa reports. Delegates of 22 Pacific Island countries and territories are in Suva for the 8th Conference of the Pacific Community. Baini Marama took the opportunity to address them about developments in Fiji and its relationship with some of the neighbors. The irony is that very thing that was designed to make us weaker actually made us stronger. The look north policy that was forced on us encouraged us to go out into the world and make new friends who were prepared to listen to us. Indeed, Fiji's voice has never been stronger in the world through our role in chairing the G77 plus China, the biggest voting bloc at the UN in our region. Our exclusion from the forum made us all the more determined to strengthen our ties with our Melanesian brothers and sisters in the MSG. Barimarama says the hostility has taught Fiji many lessons and has made it more determined and resilient, cautioning that as neighbors, we must not insist on imposing our will on others. We all know that the fundamental principle in the conduct of international affairs is respect for sovereign rights and non-interference in the internal affairs of other countries. Why was Fiji as an exception? The hard-hitting speech by Prime Minister Vorenge Barimurama was rather not surprising to the delegates, but something they felt needed to be said at the start of this forum. His emphasis on sovereignty is right. How can people talk about 
you, uh, applying rules of so, uh, applying applying rules of law and order or in respect to human rights in other places are not applied here, where in fact they they are actually doing things that are considered to be for the betterment of the uh, of the Fijian society. Fiji conducts its own um, matters, national matter sovereignty. We don't interfere with that, but we commend Fiji. Uh, in this process now is going back to election. Uh, each country has their own relevant issues and I think uh, these uh, are also internal and uh, can be uh, also treated with, uh, with care and I, I, I trust that there can always be an amicable uh, solution to all issues. Badimarama updated delegates about Fiji's election plan saying it is on track to hold democratic parliamentary elections next year under a constitution which establishes a common and equal citizenry. Mikolonga, FBC News. An 11-year-old boy was admitted at CWM Hospital in Suva on the weekend after he was allegedly speared with an oar. Around lunchtime on Saturday, a man cleaning a boat allegedly speared the boy with the oar. And he's... Pr s sorry. Apparently, the boy and his friends started teasing him by swimming toward the vessel. The victim was rushed to the hospital where he underwent surgery and is said to be in a satisfactory condition. The 42-year-old suspect is expected to appear in the Nausori Magistrates Court tomorrow. Fiji Airways has farewelled its last Boeing 747 today, and the national airline has revealed that it is looking at increasing the size of its fleet. In a rare send-off, hundreds of staff members wrote farewell messages on the jumbo jet as it prepares for its final departure next week. Christopher Chand with this story. Fiji Airways staff saying goodbye to the last 747 this afternoon. The plane has retired and will return to its owners next week. Yeah, I have a tear in one eye because it's time to say goodbye and I always really appreciated uh, the farewell song because it was a very emotional moment. I also have a smile in the other eye because I see these four en engines have been replaced by two engines but the new aircraft A330 is much more fuel efficient and much more efficient in general. So we're saying goodbye to this aircraft. We say welcome to the bright future. In a rather unique way, Pisla led the way for staff by writing down send-off messages on the aircraft. This aircraft uh, joined our fleet in 2003, which is more than 10 years ago, and it has accomplished approximately 100,000 hours of flying, 15,860 landings for Fiji Airways. It has been a very, very reliable aircraft. Uh, in the end, we struggled a little bit more to keep it uh, floating, and now it's replaced by the A330. The national carrier now indicating bringing new planes as part of its five-year plan. Of course, we look at each aircraft platform. We look at the fact if we need one more A330 or whatever. We look, look if we need more, one more 737 or two more. We look at everything. It's not every day that you get to ride on an airplane. But today at the Fiji Airways hangar, the grand old bird of the skies was given a fitting farewell for its service to the company. Christopher Chan, FBC News. Coming up, Greenpeace urges regional governments to reduce fishing capacity to save tuna stocks. It's always Gold FM for us at Golden Point, Raki Raki. Gold FM is number one in Lusaka. Gold FM is Nandi's best radio station. It's always Gold FM with us here in Singatoka. Old is Gold and Gold FM is number one here in Lotoka. Singatoka loves classic hits on Gold FM. We listen to Gold FM here in Tawa. We love Gold FM in Bang. We've got beautiful beaches, people and Gold FM in Raki Raki. Lotoka loves the classic hits on Gold FM. Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. 
Today is World Accident Survival Day, and the Land Transport Authority is using the opportunity to create awareness about the impact of road accidents on people. Apisalomidoka has the story of a woman who survived a horrific road accident over 30 years ago. Retired nurse Alumitakini has lived with her injuries and the terrifying memories of that road accident in 1977. On that day, Kini was taking a patient and her baby from Nosori Hospital, where she worked to CWM Hospital in Suva. The ambulance was involved in an accident at the Valley level runabout. I spent about two months in bed uh, with a multiple fracture on my right leg. Uh, traction. I was released after two months. It was Christmas, 1977, with crutches, and uh, like after New Year, then I started back, started work again. Measured my limbs. My right side was one and a half inches short, of my, so I had to bear that limb till now. The memory of the accident still fresh in her mind. Today, she had this advice for road users. My advice to the drivers, please, if you're drunk or you, are, you don't have enough sleep, don't, do not drive because when you sit at your vehicle, our lives are with you. With the high number of road deaths and accidents reported so far, the Land Transport Authority continues to call on drivers and pedestrians to follow road rules. Uh, we would like to uh, set aside this day, therefore, uh, just to remind people of the repercussion that uh, these people will have to endure, you know, uh, for the rest of their life. Uh, some are now on wheelchairs, some are now on crutches, some are probably uh, disabled for, the for life. The intends to invite other accident survivors to share their personal stories so that the message gets across to the public. Be wise on the roads, be cautious, and save lives. Apisalome Doka, FBC News. Two Chinese nationals will be sentenced on Friday for failing to declare foreign currency at Nandi International Airport. Customs officers detained Wang Jiang Lu and Zhang Wa Li as they tried to leave for Hong Kong last Thursday. The pair pleaded guilty in court and were released on bail. Wang Zhang was found with assorted foreign currency worth about $17,000. Zhang Wa had more than $15,000 in assorted currency. Greenpeace International has launched a report suggesting how government can reduce fishing capacity to save the tuna stocks in the region. Chanel Sivan says the report titled Fewer Boats, More Fish calls for urgent me measures to protect the supply of tuna. Over 2 million tons of tuna was taken from the Western and Central Pacific Ocean last year. There was also a record of the number of 3,300 vessels catching tuna, while another 45 vessels are under construction in Asian shipyards destined for the Pacific. We'd like to ensure that the Pacific Island countries who are custodians of a fishery that supplies almost 60% of the world's tuna receive as much benefit from the fishery something our Pacific people rightfully deserve. We need more local players. Uh, governments across the Pacific need to be more involved. They need to be proactive. They need to support the local interests. The report titled Fewer Boats, More Fish suggests having fewer boats and more fish and reducing the number of long line and Persian vessels. It urges the Western and Central Fishing Commission to consider the suggestions when its members meet in December. Uh, fewer boats, more fish provides Greenpeace's solutions and, and how we think the, the Commission needs to address this. Um, what the Commission needs to do now is to put a, a, a freeze on fishing capacity. Uh, at the upcoming meeting in December, there needs to be a cap on vessels and a freeze. Meanwhile, 30 crew members of Greenpeace ship Arctic Sunrise are in prison in Russia. They have been charged for protesting in Russian waters and calling for attention to the threat of oil drilling and climate change. There is a global petition being circulated calling for the release of the activists. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. Two international institutions based in the country have signed an agreement to assist the drought-stricken Marshall Islands. The British High Commission in Suva and the United Nations Development Programme signed the agreement to facilitate recovery in the Marshalls. The agreement will provide a framework and strategy for drought recovery and also prevent recurrence. 
The UK is providing about $55,000 for this work. How privileged we are and thankful for this uh, partnership with the United Kingdom around this important initiative. We've been uh, a strong partner of the government of the Republic of the Marshall Islands for a long time. I'm very pleased that also recently, besides the support that we've been providing from Suva, um, we also have a, a, um, a person who is based, uh, a program uh, um, expert who is based in Majuro. So that's a very important uh, contribution. A group of experts will start work in the Marshalls next month. And we turn to sports now. Jamie, fantastic results this morning for the Fijian Bati. Fantastic indeed, Jackie. Captain Courageous Peterodi Bonideva applauded the team for the gallant effort. We hear from him after the break. Also coming up, the FRU gets a new HPU manager. Stay with us for the details. Bato bahe, ba me Radio Fiji 2 ke kon sa ke roke? Online clear. Radio Fiji 2, rakhe rakhe ke log jada sunte hain. Nandi me ham sab ki pasan Radio Fiji 2. Pehle wo ke log Radio Fiji 2 sab se jada sun rahe hain. Meri pasan Radio Fiji 2, Masuri me sabhi ko pasan Radio Fiji 2. Tawa me Radio Fiji 2 sabhi ko sunte hain. Radio Fiji 2 rock. Radio Fiji 2, I love you. Best sound, best music, Mirchi FM rocks and records. Nandika number one station in Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is number one in Nasori. Lotus Mirchi FM is hot. Ham log Mirchi FM roz sunta hai. Mirchi FM dago mama. Welcome back to FBC Sports. The Vodafone Fiji Mbati side has set up a Rugby League World Cup semi-final with Australia after beating Samoa 22-4 this morning. The win also means that Fiji will be part of the Four Nations Championship. Aaron Groom and Wes Nangama both scored first half tries while Vitale Rongida crossed the line just before full time. All three tries were converted by Wes Nangama who also kicked two penalties. Now in a repeat matchup of the 2008 World Cup semi-finals, Fiji hoped to revenge the 54-nil drubbing they received from the Kangaroos then. Captain Peter Rodivoni Deva says this morning's win was a team effort. This has uh, been a fantastic moment for the team and uh, you know, as, uh, as captain, obviously very proud of uh, the way the boys played and uh, we prepared really well all week uh, and um, you know, the result of that was uh, you know, a, a fantastic performance. By the, by the boys, so um, you know, very, very happy, and um, you know, looking forward to uh, next week. Uh, you know, playing at Wembley uh, against Australia. You know, we can't wait. Meanwhile, Vodafone Fiji has extended its sponsorship of the Fiji National Rugby League with a four million dollar contract covering the next three years. The mobile service provider will sponsor all FNRL tournaments and events until 2017, as well as retain naming rights to the national team. The agreement was sealed this morning hot on the heels of the Vodafone Fiji Mbati defeat of Samoa at the Rugby League World Cup in Warrington. Vodafone Fiji Managing Director Aslam Khan says the win is an incredible feat and they are lucky to be associated with the champions. The renewal of our sponsorship is another step towards a relationship with FNRL and a sponsorship of and support of our sports. As a responsible corporate, we always want to ensure that we fulfill our, our obligation towards the community and this is what we give back to the community. The sponsorship provides some duty to market and showcase Fiji players to international clubs. The Vodafone Fiji Mbati take on the Kangaroos on Sunday. The Fiji Rugby Union has a new high-performance unit general manager. New Zealand national John McKee was introduced to the public today. Salen Dadakadaka tells us more. John McKee brings a vast depth of experience and knowledge to Fiji rugby. Having had development coaching stints with clubs in Europe, Tonga and Australia, McKee has always been aware of Fiji's potential to compete at a much higher level of competition. When I was with the Tonga Rugby Union, we played here often and also you know, watching them in the PNC and the Rugby World Cup. I, I see a huge amount of potential and I think I can really got a lot to offer to, to, to work with all the staff here and, and the high performance unit to, to take the take the, um, 
the Fijian performance to another level. McKee aims to develop a clear pathway for players from secondary schools rugby through the national age grade teams towards the senior team. The other area of high performance that is really important is, is developing your best local talent to bring them through the, through the development pathway to make sure that the young guys you're working with here in Fiji progress to, to national team representation. Because you know the, the young talented guys here, you know through the through the under 18s, the under 20s, and that they're the guys you want to see coming into the to the potential flying Fijian players. The development of women's rugby is also on Mickey's list of things to do. He believes our women can go a long way with the right backing. Salendo Vakavak, FBC Sports. Silver Cricket Association's club competition is kicking off this weekend. And in the first for the association, the competition will be played in two divisions, which is a direct result of more teams signing up to compete. Selvin Chand has more. Last season was a success for Suva Cricket. Clubs did not fail to show up for the weekly competition. The interest has grown so much that new clubs will make their entry this season. It's going to be very interesting that uh, we have formatted it so that we cater for all teams that are interested in entering to be part of Suva Cricket Association. Banking on last year's success, Suva Cricket promises that the coming season will be even better with increased competition for clubs. We are targeting far better than that. Uh, it is really, that we have to look at it, Suva Cricket is the only cricket that might be alive in the whole of Fiji. Okay? And uh, it is where basically Cricket Fiji is targeting to improve and increase their participation. Development has always been a big part of sewer cricket, and once again, clubs are being urged to involve as many youths as possible. We have asked all management of clubs that they should bring in youths, no? the secondary school students, and even into their teams. Uh, the planning was that, that we should, at the end of the day, no, get people, those who are interested from a very young age, to the Suva Kirkir in order for them to compete into the national, uh, national uh, competition. Weather permitting, a Suva Cricket Association season will start this Saturday at Albert Park. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports. That was your Monday Night Sports. It's back to Jackie now with the business. Trade and Industry Ministry is currently reviewing licenses held by scrap metal dealers. Permanent Secretary for Trade Shaheen Ali says there are currently 13 licensed scrap metal dealers in Fiji. Speaking on our TV current affairs program for the record last night, Ali said a moratorium on issuance of new licenses was brought in by the minister because of the increase in theft and damage of public infrastructure. Ministry of Industry and Trade is at the moment just renewing licenses, those licenses that have expired, and if the track record of that dealer has been clean, then we renew that license. Uh, in time to come, uh, we will uh, review that uh, moratorium mm -hmm. and uh, get a review of the decision uh, by the Minister for Industry and Trade. Ali adds they are trying to make the industry self-regulated, otherwise there will be a high level of administration, monitoring and compliance costs involved. Weather time and Jen, what about the 747 going back to the States for retirement? Tell me about it. Hopefully I'll end up in the Bahamas for my <laughs> retirement. Just joking, you know I love my country. <laughs> anyway, it was all showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. A few centers though had sunny conditions this morning. Look at that. No readings for Savu Savu and Lombasa today. Bars the warmest on 32, while Nandi's a very short skip away on 31 degrees. More heavy rain tomorrow with a few cloudy periods in Suva and Savu Savu. A moist east to northeast wind flow prevails over the group and there'll also be poor visibility in areas of heavy rain and squally thunderstorms. Squally, now that's a new word. And here's a picture you don't get to see every day, a swallowtail butterfly on an aster. 
sent in by Tom Cook of Raspberry Hill in Andarivatu. There are over 550 species in the family, which also includes the largest butterfly in the world. Hmm, how's that for some trivia? Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. The main points again, Prime Minister Borenge Mbaini Marama says Fiji has become stronger, although some neighbors chose to isolate the country. Four soldiers in the Golan Heights between Israel and Syria were injured in a motor accident over the weekend, and Fiji Airways today farewell the last of the Boeing 747 that was in its fleet for the past decade. Results now from last week's poll question. We asked, are you pleased with the 2014 national budget? 80% said yes, 20% said no. This week we ask, is there a role for the Commonwealth in Fiji's development? Visit our FBC website to answer. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. And you can join me again at the same time tomorrow night. Ni mo de mamba. Today FM is awesome in bar. We love you today FM. Today FM rocks in the story and I love listening to today FM. Today FM is number one in Tele. Today FM rocks in Otaka. Woohoo! Today FM is the most popular station in the scene. We love everything about today FM here at Golden Point Rekireki. Everybody in Singapore loves today FM. Today FM rocks in bar. Yeah!